Hey guys, Vin Hart here, and I want to talk to you about how to start being able to play over chord changes, some lead notes. Um, so I'm not going to talk about a specific song, and don't turn me off right there, because I know we like to play songs, but I'm going to talk about the concept of being able to do it, and kind of where I would start if I would start all over again. So let's go to the key of D, and I'm going to tell you kind of what most players I run into that are real successful think about, and I definitely think this way as well. So we're going to go to the key of D and we're going to picture chord shapes and then play notes around them. And I will tell you how to make sense out of that. So first things first, so if you know your open D chords, here's an open D chord. Let's just concentrate right now on these three strings. So your B, we're going to leave this high E out, B, G, and D right there. Let's concentrate on only playing chords with those three strings. And I want you to picture this, then we'll add notes around it, and I think it'll really open up a whole world for you. So since these two notes right here, the second fret and the third fret of the G and the B string, since that, that other one's left out, we're gonna play them with the first finger and the third finger right, or first finger, second finger, and then we're gonna take this third finger, we're gonna add the third of the chord, and we're going to play a D like this on the fourth fret of the D string. We're not gonna leave that open because I want you to be able to transpose and I want this to apply to multiple different keys. So we're gonna play a chord like this. So I want you to think about if you were playing a song in D and only on these three strings, if you were even strumming. One, two, three, four, okay? And then, I'm, and then we are going to do, um, we're in the key of D, so we'll go to a five chord, which is an A. Well, if you know this A chord right there, then you already know what to press down on these three strings, whether you bar it, partially bar it with the finger behind it, sometimes I do that, or, or your fingers can fit all in there on the second fret of those three strings, you know how to play an A chord. And then we're gonna go, so D, A, and then we're gonna go to a minor chord so we don't lose one of those. So think about the dreaded B minor when you're first learning to play the bar. So we're only going to do these three chord, these three notes right here. And if you think about an A minor right here and moving them up a couple frets. So third fret, fourth fret, fourth fret. All right. So that is your B minor because we don't, we're not, we're not hitting all these other notes. So we only need out of this chord right here, we only need those three notes for the B minor. So it's like we're barring an A minor, but we we don't have to bar it because we're only playing with there. Then also we're going to go to a G chord. Now I know here's an open G right here, but I want you to be able to transpose this. So we'll talk about open chords another day. So here is an F chord. Let's move it up, you know, the dreaded F chord, but we don't have to bar these first two because we're only playing those three. So we're going to picture this chord. So the chord progression is, we're going to go to A, So here's the thing, if you can't play a rhythm or even strum through without uh, imagining, these are what we call triads, you hear people talk about triads, these are what they are, it's three note chords, basically. If you can't picture that and can't play it through rhythm, then it's real difficult just to play lead on top of without getting lost, for sure. And when you start throwing chords that are out of the scale and out of the key that you're in, this is going to help you in the long run, but we're going to keep it real simple. So we got these. So we're going to play that D like this. A, B minor to G. So one, two, three, four, another bar of A. And, and then another bar, we're going to play B minor, another bar, this G right here. So if you can make it through that, whether you're just going one, two, three, four, and making a little pattern, and all I'm doing is going, you know, D string, G string, B string, back to the G string, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now A, same thing, one, two, three, four. Oop. Or if you just strum without hitting that E string, you can. So now that you have that, we're going to talk about the notes that work around that. 
And so you have to picture that in, in your mind. And then we're going to add a uh, major pentatonic notes around that. So in D, in, in the scale that you're in, but I'm just gonna show it to you. So don't, don't worry if you don't know yet, um, that's for another time. I just want you to get an overview and know how important this is and send you on the path and what to learn there. So major pentatonic scale. If I hit a chord at the beginning of each one of those measures and then played a little lick, I would play the lick within the major pentatonic scale other than the minor, obviously I'd play a minor pentatonic scale. Um, so here we go. I could go one, two, three, four. So I played a lick within those five notes of the, of the major pentatonic D scale because we're in a D chord, but we're headed to A. So we can go one, two, three. And now I know here's a A, two, three. Now B minor. So the next thing I would do after being able to hold those chords is to create melodies or notes with the pentatonic scale. And this will get you thinking about creating melodies and notes and changing chords in your head still. So the first note of the bar, one, two, one, two, three, four, the one, two, three, I would hold down the chord, just get used to it. One, two, three, and then Go, then I would go and then I would hit another chord. Two, three. Two, three. And even if that's only two notes, or just the arpeggio of it, just the, the notes there. Two, three. And maybe that's what I would do first. I would hit the, I would create melodies or licks with just the notes that you're pressing down. One, two, three. Slide into it. Nah, let's not do that. Two, three. And I don't do them in right, perfectly in order. I went. Two, three. So first, I would learn the shape. I'd be able to play a rhythm with the shape. And then I would create a melody or a lick with the notes that I'm pressing down. And then I would maybe then I would add the other notes to those chords. Now, in the key of D, you got you got a D, E, F sharp. Oh, I'm sorry, D, E, yes, F sharp. And then you got the five and six of the chords. So you got an A and then a B. So, so within there, we've got, we can, here's the two of it. So there's E, so I'm gonna slide into a chord tone. So one of the notes we're pressing down is a note of the chord for sure. So you can know that. So you can know start and end on whatever chord on whatever chord you're playing. So if we're on D, let's slide into or start with one of these notes. And then go to A, because we're playing over an A now. And then now there's an A minor. G, and then maybe slide into this note. So now you go and learn um, your your pentatonic scales and you make melodies up over it. So you go two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. See? And then you're picturing those chords, and then eventually, once you have that and you're really picturing those chords and you can grab that then you can just play lead and picture those the whole time and slide into those chord tones. So you could go. Two. And I kind of went into some other <laughs> triads and stuff in there because I have not only those three strings, I have these three and I've got different shapes. But if you can't play the rhythm and the chord that you're going to play over on the strings that you're playing, then it's you'll get lost really easy. So, strum, make a chord progression, whatever that may be in a key. Learn to strum or play a rhythm pattern over it. 
and then make a melody around the notes that you're pressing down, those core tones, and then learn the pentatonic scale around those. And you'll see how this transposes. Here's D, we move it up a half step, now we're in E flat, now we're in E, so here's E. to hit harmony notes and slide into them because you know all these notes of the chord that you were playing so there's an over overview of how to start playing actually what they call the cage system and um you know it's a lot more fun to play over some chords and different things so picture the chords make melody with the chord tones and then learn your major pentatonic scales and that is the best place to start in my opinion to learn how to play improv and start playing lead